Ooh, hello friends, hope you're well. In my last video I made some coffins to add to my diorama and a couple of people asked to see how they're made so I'm gonna show you those quickly today and also a few other things you can make from coffee stirrers to use as scenery or decoration for your own dioramas. And all we need for making these bits are some coffee stirrers, some foam, random off cuts are fine, some super glue and some paints. So. I'll start with the coffins for those who wanted to see how they're made, and the process will be very similar for the other bits we'll be making today as well. First of all, I measure out a coffin shaped template that's about 4cm long, 2cm wide at the widest point, and 1cm wide at the bottom. This size works well for me, but you can adjust it depending on the scale you want, and it doesn't need to be perfect, just get it roughly coffin shaped. I use the template to mark up our foam and then cut the shapes out. I'll be making two today and they're both quite rough around the edges. This foam is not ideal, XBS would have been the better choice as it cuts easier whilst retaining a kind of fairly straight edge, but like I said, it doesn't matter too much, just get the rough shape correct. Next, I size up the stirrers against the different sides of the coffins and then cut them down to length. I want quite a rough ramshackle looking coffin, so I split the planks into smaller sections and then start gluing these on. The smaller uneven planks leave gaps between each other, which gives us that thrown together look. If you want neat looking coffins instead, do the same process but use planks that line up nicely without any gaps like this. Do the same thing for the tops and then use a sharp knife to trim off any excess to give it that angular coffin shape on top. For my second coffin, I want a little skeleton hanging out, so I carve out a dip in the foam, glue in the bones, and then glue the top planks around it. I add a bunch of smaller smashed up bits around the top here to make it look like it's been busted open, and then use some scissors and some pliers to rough up the edges a bit. I don't bother with the bottoms if they're not going to be visible, but you can play around with their bottoms if you want. Anyway, that's all the building work done, so let's paint them up. And for the painting, you can do whatever you want, you know, base coat it, wash it, kiss it gently, dry brush it, whatever you would normally do with scenery pieces. But all I'm going to do is add a couple of coats of dark wash, strong tone by Army Painter in this case. I think this works well for this style of coffin as it keeps the wood looking fairly natural, but also darkens them down and dirties them up a bit. The wash won't settle properly over areas where the super glue is spilled out, so be mindful of that and try not to get too much of your goo onto your wood. But it can also add to the old beaten up and worn out effect, so it does work alright for these coffins. I'll give them a quick coat of matte varnish just to remove the slight glossy sheen from the dried wash, and they are finished. Ready for you to put onto your dioramas or just to put into a drawer and never think about them again. Up next, let's make some little crates. Like I said earlier, it's going to be more or less the same process for these crates. So for my smaller one, I cut out a roughly cube shaped piece of foam, size up my stirrers and start cutting out planks. The good thing about this one being cube shaped is that all the planks will be the same length, which can save a bunch of time in measuring and chopping. I glue these planks onto all the sides of the foam, again giving the bottom a miss if it won't be visible, and then trim off any excess bits that overlap. If you want your planks and boxes to be a smaller scale, you can split the planks like I did for the coffins and add them in the same way. With all the sides covered, it looks a bit weird still, so we need to add some framing around the edges, which boxes everything in. I do this by splitting some of our planks into narrower pieces and gluing these onto the edges, tops and bottoms of each face. Make sure to push each piece right up to the edge so there's no gaps and your creations should now look a lot more crate-like. Use the same technique to make larger crates of differing proportions and maybe add the planks in a vertical alignment like I have here so you can just trim off any excess and avoid having to do a bunch of different measurements for the different size sides. With these larger crates, I also like to add a diagonal bracing piece which makes them look a bit more realistic as larger size storage or shipment crates. I add the braces by lining up a plank I've split to thin it down across the middle of each face and use my knife to mark and cut off the angled ends at a roughly 45 degree angle to fit nicely into the corners. For painting, you can do the washes like with the coffins but I prefer to base coat them in various brown paints, wash them with some Arac Surf Shade and then once that's all dried off I come in with some fine sandpaper to rough up the edges and faces a bit. Don't go too over the top with the sandpaper though, just pull off enough paint to make the crates look nicely worn around the edges of the planks. You can also achieve this effect with dry brushing, but I find it a lot quicker and easier to just rough it up with some sandpaper. I think this ends up looking a bit more realistic in the end as well. So, 
Those were our generic storage crates, but what about some nice military style ones? I have two styles of military crates I make most often. This thinner, smaller, small weapons crate, and this larger, taller one, which could be used for bigger ordnance. For the thinner one, I take a stirrer and line up the width of it with some foam, and then cut out a rectangle piece at this height. I then size up, cut out, and glue on some planks to each of the four sides. If you want a closed crate like this one, just line your planks up on top of the foam and glue them down. But if you want open ones like this, you'll need to make your lid separately. So to do this, I line up my planks here on my mat and then take a couple of bracing pieces I split down to make thinner. Mark up where each one will sit and then glue them down on each side. These braces will hold down the planks firmly in place, allowing you to move them about as needed. You then just want to add a couple of smaller bracing bits to the thinner bottom section, making sure to line them up with the lid. If you're going for open lids as well, just trim down the foam inside as much as you can so the weapons can sit in there while still having the lid sit flush on top. And be careful not to make a hole in the bottom. For the larger military crates, I cut off a thin bit of foam again in a longer, narrower style, and then I use my bracing method like I did for the lid just a moment ago to make three identical sections. I like to go three full planks width and then glue them together with a full width bracing piece. I glue two of the pieces onto each side and keep the third, which I'll use as a lid, off to the side. You can glue the lid down if you want, but I like to leave it loose so we can put some goodies inside. Measure up and cut out some smaller pieces to cap off the ends and then glue these down too. This can be quite fiddly so stay patient and try not to glue the wood to your fingers. Again, you can cut the foam down a bit if needed, but by starting with a thin foam piece and the three stirrers width sides, you should have plenty of room in there already. To finish off the military crates, I paint them up in a nice green colour, I'm using Lauren Forest, add on a darker green wash like a Thonian camo shade, and then rough them up with some sandpaper again like the other crates. I try to focus this roughing up on the areas which would get most wear and tear like the corners and the middle areas here where people would be opening the crates and then also come in with a hobby knife to add some random scratches here and there. If you take off too much paint or find your wear and tear looking too uniform, just dab on some little bits of paint to fix it up again. As a final touch, I just paint the foam in black to finish it off, and then you can glue in any weapons or other little bits you'd like to go in the open ones. Easy peasy, yeah? Nice. Last up, let's make a gate and maybe a little door too. So these are probably the easiest of the whole bunch to make, but can still look really cool if you put a bit of effort into decorating them. To make a nice big gate here, all I do is line up some stirrers on my mat, and then glue them together using some bracing pieces like we did a moment ago. I then mark up the shape of the gate I want and trim down the stirrers using some sharp pliers or scissors. I want this gate to be quite old and decrepit looking so I focus on roughing up the tops and bottoms and also making some little holes and other surface damage using some pliers or scissors again. I add some little handles I made by gluing a piece of wire I bent into a circle onto a small off cut of stirrer, I paint it black and then paint on a darker brown colour to about 80-90% to of the surface leaving a lot of that black showing through, and then proceed to dirty up the doors by adding a variety of dark washes, focusing a lot towards the bottoms which might be all wet and rotten. I paint the handles with a dab of metallics, and then add some rust colour before adding a tiny bit of green paint and flock to simulate some mossy growth. For a more typical door, again line up your stirrers and glue them together with some bracing pieces, and these can be hidden on the back, or incorporated onto the visible side like I'll be doing. I mark up a square section for a small window and then glue down a piece of clear plastic to the back. I also added some thinner pieces like we did to the crates to frame the window in place. I glue on a random off cut of stirrer as a makeshift handle, but you could use a piece of wire or whatever else you have laying around. And then for the painting, I was planning to paint this up to be very clean and a bit of a contrast to the gate I just made, but I ended up making it look all rotten and dirty instead by first painting it with some Ulthra and Grey and then add in a bunch of dark washes which I dab off the excess with my fingertip. I then stippled on a bit more of my base coat and added a wash of cerium from sepia to the plastic window, which gave it a really nice old grimy antique glass look. Your doors don't have to be as manky as this, I just always seem to end up painting stuff in a gross or beaten up and worn out way, not sure what that says about me, but all the armchair Freudians feel free to message me of your diagnoses. So -hoo -hoo -hoo. there we go, just a quick one today. I just wanted to show you some of the things I regularly make from coffee stirrers. 
to hopefully give you some ideas and inspirations for stuff you can make yourselves. Coffee stirrers are a super versatile material for dioramas and scenery pieces. They just need a bit of tender loving care to make them fit nicely with whatever you're making. And don't worry if your edges are not all straight or some bits bulge out. You probably noticed that ones I made today had a bunch of flaws, but it doesn't really matter too much once they're placed in your dioramas. Just arrange them so the best sides or faces or edges are facing the focal point of whatever you've made. Like this crate here is pretty wonky to be honest, so I would definitely be positioning this face to be the most visible one, as the others look a little bit squirrely. And with that in mind, you can also take shortcuts to make this a bit easier for yourselves. For example, if you know you're going to have a bunch of crates stacked up together, but you'll only be able to see one side of them, then just add the planks to that face only and hide the other naked parts away with other bits of scatter or decoration. So yes, hopefully you've found some value in this, even if it's just motivated you to go and make some way less wonky crates than I have today. But if you did enjoy it, please feel free to subscribe and stick around as there will be many more of these kinds of videos and more coming soon. Thank you for watching friends, I will see you very soon, I'll see ya!